Hello, my amazing Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. A, and I love math. Tonight, we're here with Lesson 23, which is all about equivalent equations and the addition property of equality. So we're going to start with some terminology, like we usually do. Equivalent equations have the same solution. So equivalent equations are any equations that have the same solution set. So let's start with an example. We know that 2 is equal to 2, but when we have one side equal to the other side and set equal with an equal sign in between, it is an equation, isn't it? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the same thing to both sides of this equation. So I'm going to add a 4 because that's what your book is adding to each side of the equation. So I'm going to add a 4, and over here I'm going to add a 4. Okay, so now that I've added a 4 to each side, 2 plus 4 is 6, and 2 plus 4 is 6, and I have a true statement again. Okay, now let's go over here and see, well, does it matter which order I do it? I put the 4 after the 2. Does it matter if I put the 4 in front of the 2? So let's put the 2 over a little bit so we have some room and put 4 plus 2 and 4 plus 2. So now I changed the order and I put the 4 in front of the 2, but when I add, don't I still get 6 equals 6? Okay, 6 equals 6. Now, the fact that adding did not make, it did not make a difference which way I added. I added the 4 behind the 2. I added the 4 in front of the 2. I got the same answer both ways. So it does not matter in which order we add two numbers together. Um, we're still going to get the same result. That's called the commutative property and we will be studying that more later. But right now let's look at our next board and we're going to state the, uh, the uh, additive property of um, equality here. So here we have it on the little board. If A equals B, so basically if left side is equal to right side, we don't have to have it be constants, it could be a variable, but we have an equation and the left-hand side must equal the right-hand side. Then A plus C is equal to B plus C, and C plus A is equal to C plus B. Now let's take a, a look and dissect this a little bit. What happened to change our equation? We started with A equals B, and over here we have an A and a B, but what have we done to both sides of the equation? We added the same thing. We added a C to both sides of the equation. Okay, down here, we started with A equals B, and we have A equals B, but we added the C in the front this time. Here we added the C in the back, here we added the C in the front. So it does not matter in which order we add this other number, as long as the C number is the same. Now, what I did not write on the board is the very beginning of this. It says if A, B, and C are real numbers, which means there are any numbers that can fit on our real number line. So what we have here is if A equals B, and then this one is also true. These are equivalent equations, which means they have the same solutions. All right, so here we're going to put some actual problems together. So here it says if x plus 4 equals 6. Now you might be already able to already decide what x needs to be to make that a true statement. But shh. Don't tell anybody. We're going to figure it out together, okay? And I decide to add the same thing to both sides, and I'm going to choose to add a negative 4 to both sides. Then I get x plus 4 plus negative 4, and on the other side I get 6 plus negative 4. Here is what I started with, x plus 4 and x plus 4 equals 6 equals 6, but then I added the same quantity to both sides. Therefore, both sides are still equal by our addition property of equality. 
All right, so now, what does this tell me? Do I have something I can tell from this? What is a four plus a negative four? Those are inverses of each other, right? So we're going to have them cancel out. Four and negative four add to zero, don't they? So we get x is six minus four. What is six minus four? Well, that's two. So we get x equals two. I bet you had already figured that out, right? Because two plus four is six. So now that we have found that x is equal to two, let's go ahead and check it on the next board. So here's our next board, and we're gonna say x is two. Let's check. So this was our original problem. We're gonna plug in a two for the x, and we're going to see if we have a true statement. And we do. Is two a solution? Yes, it is. Also, it is called a root. So a solution or a root is a number that makes an equation true. And equivalent equations have the same solutions. So now what I'm going to do as we start to solve equations is I'm going to be finding an equivalent equation until I finally get it all the way as simple as I can get it. And I have x equals something. All right. Now I'm going to write x minus 3 equals 12. So you can see it a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to add or subtract things right underneath the number because sometimes numbers are too tight for you to add them horizontally like we did here. Okay, here, oops, wrong board. Here I put the four and then I put the negative four right next to it. Sometimes our equations are written too tightly to do that. So a lot of times we'll do it right underneath. So what would make the negative 3 just go away? If I added a positive 3, would it make the negative 3 disappear? Well, if I add a positive 3 to one side, I'd better add it to the other side too because that's what my addition property of equality tells me. So now let's add these together. So x does not have anything to add to. Negative 3 plus a 3 is 0. And 12 plus a 3 is 15. Now, this equation is equivalent to the one I started with because I used the addition property of equality, which yields only equivalent equations. But let's check. Let's take our 15 and let's plug it back up into the spot where we have the x. So instead of the x, I'll put the 15. 15 take away 3 is 12. Yes, that's right. And so we have a solution. Okay, so now we have another problem here. And it has fractions. There we go. Some fractions going on here. So on this one, we're going to go ahead and write it out the long way just because I think it may be a little bit easier for you to see when we have it horizontally. So x plus one fourth, I'm going to leave some space, is negative three eighths. Okay, now when I do this, I'm going to try to add something to the this side to get rid of the one fourth because I want to solve for my x. I'm always trying to get x by itself and find out what that unknown number is. So I'm going to add a negative one fourth because positive one fourth and negative one fourth will add to zero. So I have to do the same thing to the other side. So I will add a negative one fourth. I'm out of room over there. Okay, so I add a negative one fourth over here. These are going to go to zero and I will get x is. Now I have a little bit of a problem. I have a negative three eighths but I have a negative one-fourth, and negative one-fourth and negative three-eighths don't have the same denominator. But what if I write a negative one-fourth and then I times it by two over two? Okay, so now I'm going to multiply across. Remember, two over two is one, and so that should work to make it the same value, but 
now it's going to have a, a common denominator of 8, isn't it? So we've got negative 3 eighths and then negative 2 eighths. So this negative 2 eighths, I'm going to erase this and put negative 2 eighths because it's the same thing as negative 1 fourth, isn't it? So now negative 3 eighths plus negative 2 eighths is negative 5 eighths. So we're saying that our answer is negative 5 eighths. So let's check that out here. Let's plug in for our x a negative 5 eighths. Okay, so let's get our red marker here. We have eighths and eighths, so we need to turn this into eighths. So if I multiply by 2 on the top and the 2 on the bottom, then what do I get? Let's see if I can find another marker. I'm going to multiply by 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom, and now I'm going to get 2 eighths. So let's take away the 1 fourth and make it 2 eighths. So is negative 5 eighths plus 2 eighths equal to negative 3 eighths? And yes, it is. And that is a true statement. Therefore, negative 5 eighths was a solution or a root of the original equation. So there's that board, and we're going to do some more examples. Okay, this is practice, I mean example three, and then we'll start our practices. So here we're trying to find out what k is. Everything else is known. So we need to get rid of this two and one third so that we get k by itself on one side. So what if we subtract two and one third, then we must also subtract two and one third from the other side. Okay, so here we draw our line, k, this goes to zero because a positive and a negative of the same value will equal zero, equals. So now we have two ninths minus two and one third. Okay, so now I'm going to have to do this subtraction, but I'm going to go ahead and change my one third by multiplying by 3 over 3, okay? So now I've got equals 2 ninths minus 2 and 3 ninths, okay? Now, just to keep things, um, remember we've got a negative, and we can go ahead and do this math, but remember when we add opposite signs, a positive and a negative together, we can go ahead and attach that negative right there, can't we? So we're actually adding opposite signs. We really subtract and then take the sign of the greater valued number. But isn't it easier to think of 2 and 3 ninths take away 2 ninths than it is to do it the other way around? Okay, we're used to having the big number on top when we subtract. Now, I know that this is a negative number. And so the negative number is going to win the tug of war. But when I add opposite signs, I subtract. So I'm going to put them in a subtraction format here. 3 ninths minus 2 ninths is 1 ninth. And I bring down the 2. But I know that answer now takes the sign of the bigger valued number, which is negative. So the answer for k is negative 2 and 1 ninth. Okay? Now, let's go back and see if this one actually plugs in and works, okay? So, um, if I come back up here to the very beginning and I plug in negative 2 and 1 ninth, negative 2 and 1 ninth, okay, plus, I've got to bring this guy back, don't I? Let's see if it's equal, okay? plus 2 and 1 third, does that equal 2 ninths? Okay, well, negative 2 and 1 ninth is still in a good form. But I'm going to change this to positive 2, and 1 third is the same as 3 ninths. And when I add opposite signs, I subtract. So 3 ninths take away 1 ninth is going to be 2 ninths. 
and 2 take away 2 is 0. So I do get the correct answer. Okay, now we're starting our practice. So these are your practices for A and B. So you need to copy them down and then pause your video. Well, I hope you did that and that you have the answers. I'm going to show you what they are. So if we want to add something here to get rid of the 5, can we add a negative 5 to both sides? So adding a negative 5 is the same thing as subtracting a 5, isn't it? So it doesn't matter whether you add a negative 5 or subtract a 5. They both work. So we have 5, take away a 5, goes to 0, and then we get x on this side, this goes out, and we have 17 minus 5 is 12. So we think we have an answer, but we should take our answer and plug it back in up here. Okay, so is 12 plus 5 equal to 17? Yes. So they are x plus 5 is 17 and x is equal to 12 are equivalent equations because they have the same answer or solution. Okay, so here we have a second one. k minus 27 is negative 38. We want to get rid of the negative 27 because isn't a minus 27 the same thing as plus a negative 27? So to get rid of that, we're going to add a 27 to both sides. Okay, so now on this side, we that disappears and we get k equals, and we have opposite signs, so we're going to subtract, and 8 take away 7 is 1, and 3 take away 2 is 1, but they're negative 11 because the negative value was greater than the positive value. So my answer, or my solution, should be negative 11, but let's check. Let's put this negative 11 back in here for the k. Negative 11 plus negative 27, is that equal to negative 38? And it is. So we would say that k plus negative 27 is equal to negative 38 is an equivalent equation to k is negative 11. And so we solve by finding simpler and simpler equivalent equations. Back with the last two practices in a moment. Here are our last two problems. So these are practices, so I want you to copy them on the board and then pause your video. Okay, so hopefully you did that and we are going to solve. So now we want to get rid of a negative one half. So we're going to get rid of the negative one half by adding a positive one half because negative one half plus one half equals zero and will go away. So we're going to add the positive one half to both sides because that's what our addition property of equality tells us we must do in order to keep equivalent equations. So we started out with an equation and we're going to try to get a simpler equation that has x by itself so that we can solve for our unknown variable. So we add the one half to each side and then we're going to have the, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller because I did not leave myself any room, did I? Plus one half plus one half. So now what do we have? x comes down. This cancels out, and then on the other side, we're going to make the one-half into a fraction that is equivalent, but has, equivalent, but has the same denominator. So we're going to multiply by 4 over 4, which is just a 1, and when we do so, we're going to get 4 over 8. So now we're going to add the 3 eighths plus the 4 over 8, and we're going to get 7 eighths. Okay, so we think we have our solution. x is equal to 7 eighths. We're going to check that solution by plugging it back in to the original equation. So 7 eighths is going to come up here, and we're going to substitute it in for the x. So 7 eighths take away 1 half is 3 eighths, and that's kind of hard to see, but if I change my 1 half and I say 7 eighths, 
take away four eighths because we know four eighths is the same thing as a half, then we can see that it does indeed equal three eighths and our check works. Therefore, the first equation and the final equation are equivalent equations and have the same answers. Okay, so a last problem down here. We have to get rid of the 4 and 1 7th. So we're going to add a negative or subtract 4 and 1 7th, it doesn't matter, and subtract 4 and 1 7th. Okay, so on this side it's pretty easy. It goes away and we get D equals. Okay, the other side's a little tough because we've got a 1 6th and a 1 7th and we've got our big number on the bottom. So this one's going to be easiest if we put the big number on the top and a smaller number on the bottom. So let's do that. Okay, so this was our original that we're trying to simplify. I went ahead and put the 4 and 1 7th on the top and we do know that the 4 and 1 7th is negative and the 3 and 1 6th is positive, which means we have to subtract. So just kind of ignore these signs over here for a minute. We're going to subtract the numeral values and we need common denominators. And guess what? The smallest common denominator between 7 and 6 is 42. So we're going to have to multiply this one by 6 over 6 and this one by 7 over 7. So now this one is going to become, we're just going to put this one over. So 6 over 42. And then this one is 7 over 42. Uh-oh, we're subtracting, aren't we? So now what do we have? We have a, we're going to ignore the signs for a minute. We know our, our ultimate result is going to be negative. So let's just skip the signs for a minute. And we have 4 and 6 over 42. And then 3 and 7 over 42. So what's going to happen with that? I cannot subtract these. So I'm going to have to come over here and borrow a 1. And when I borrow a 1, it's going to come over here as a plus 42 over 42. And so I'm going to wind up with a 48 over 42. Okay, so now 48 over 42 take away 7 over 42 is going to be 41 over 42. And then what's going to happen when I subtract the 3 minus the 3? It disappears. So we're going to wind up with 41 over 42. And remember, we said back at the very beginning, the negative number was bigger. So that's going to be a negative result. So negative 41 over 42. Let's take that back to our other board. And we're going to say D is negative 41 over 42. Okay, so now we have our answer, but we have not checked our answer. So I'm going to take the D right here, and I'm going to plug in negative 41 over 42 right there. Okay, now just for this time, let's take the 1 over 7, and remember that the 1 over 7 when I multiplied by 6 over 6, turned into a 6 over 42. And the 1 over 6, when I multiplied by 7 over 7, turned into a 7 over 42. Okay? So now I have a negative 41 over 42, a positive 4 and 6 over 42, and a 3 and 7 over 42. And I've got to do that math to check and see if my answer is right. Okay, so I'm going to do this, take away this, which means I'm going to have to borrow a 1 from here and send it over there. So let's just do that right here because we're just checking our problem. We're going to take the 4, we're going to make it a 3, we're going to add a 42 over 42, which isn't that going to make this back to a 48. So now let's check. Negative 42, 41 over 42 plus 3 and 48 over 42. Isn't the 48 over 42 minus the 41 going to give you the 7 over 42? And the 3 is going to remain. 
So it checks, and so we know that this answer is correct. And that one was a doozy. So that one took us two boards to get that one done. But we are done with your practice. And this really is a fun and easy concept. So we can add the same thing to both sides. And we talked about we could also subtract both sides by the same thing if we needed to. Because subtraction is just addition of the opposite. And so we can add or subtract the same thing from both sides. And it works. And this is Mrs. A. And may God bless your day.